Hi, my name is Suvijit Gupta. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of Tasks, a sample application we developed for Sprout Core using Sprout Core. And we use it as an agile project management tool on a lot of our development projects. And in fact, it's about to be used to replace Lighthouse to track Sprout Core issues. So let's start by logging into Tasks. It brings you into a main area where um, we have projects listed on the left. Within each project, you can see the tasks that are allocated to it. Um, let's take a look at how you add a task. You just go and click on Add Project. You give it a name, like My Project. Um, if you know how long you have uh, for the project, you can also specify that. You can say that we have 10 days to work on this project, and that shows up here. Within a project, you can uh, assign multiple tasks. Each task, when you click on it, has a number of attributes. You can uh, say that a task is a feature, it's designated by the star, or a bug, a defect, uh, or other stuff like design documentation, uh, reviews, things like that. So those are all part of the type. A task can have a priority. It could be a high priority task, a medium priority task, and also a low priority task. Low priority tasks are not added up in the tally for the amount of time left. Um, another thing tasks are useful for is to show the status. So you could, when you start working on a task, you can mark it as active. And when it's completed, you say it's done. Those are all indicated through color codes in the workspace. If a task uh, has anything troublesome with it, you can mark it as risky and it shows up as red. After a task is completed, you could actually validate it and mark it as passed and it shows as green in the ID field, or you can say that it's failed. That way uh, a developer gets the task back and then they can rectify whatever the problem was. Tasks, as you can see, are grouped by assignee. And that way, if you wanted to just see the task for, say, Subhijit Gupta, you can just put in those initials and it'll narrow it down to that. You can also filter based on uh, various attributes. You can say, what are my um, completed tasks, so I can just go in and say let's look at all the verified tasks and it'll just show those. You can of course go back and show everything. Um, if you cancel the signy filter it goes back to showing everybody. You might want to search for uh, specific things. If you just wanted to say look for all tasks that have the word priority in them, you could just type that and then you'll see that it narrows down the search. Say you want to further refine it, you can say high priority and you'll see that it narrows it down to only things that match. Throughout uh, the filtering, it always shows the tally of you know what's left to do and what's finished. Um, another interesting aspect of tasks is that it has these display modes. Uh, we've been working in the task display mode. Let's go back and clear out the filter and go back to the team mode. This gives you the whole project at a glance, how everybody's doing. It also illustrates another interesting aspect of tasks, which we call load balancing. It shows that given the time left, who's in how much trouble. So in this case it looks like um, I have a red flag which means that I either have a failed task or a task that's marked as risky. Um, if I go back to the team mode I'll see that um, red means that you're overloaded, green means that you're underloaded, and gray means that you're done. So if I go back to the task mode, uh, one thing that we do a lot of in, in our daily huddles is to reallocate work. So in this case I can take some work from Suvijit and maybe uh, let's drag this over to the guest user and now you see that uh, I'm no longer red because I've reallocated some of my work to another person. To wrap up, I wanted to just show you that you can also import tasks. I can just type uh, in a task or a project so I can say project one, you know, task one and I can just import it and you'll see that project one now has task one in it. I can now save this and uh, a save task gets an ID associated with it. I could refresh in a multi-user environment. A lot of people might be making updates at once, so you can just refresh and see you know, how everybody else is doing. You can also export these tasks. You can export it into a, a printable format like HTML, where you can turn on and off descriptions and things like that. Um, you can go back and uh, also, for editing tasks, you can double click on them and just uh, make updates like I can say updated and that's one way to do it. You could also change some of these attributes through these uh, editors that pop up when you click on the icon on the right and you can put in notes, my notes 
And then when you do that, you'll notice that it indicates this with a pencil showing that this particular task has some detailed descriptions. Uh, you can select multiple tasks and you can change them to say high priority. You can say they're all done. Um, you can even pass them. So it allows a lot of these bulk operations. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to show you was that you can click on the help button and um, it brings up a, a brief help that explains the concepts that I just went through in more detail and uh, a lot of the other functionality that I can't cover in a short demo. Uh, but most importantly, it has the last section on what we call best practices. If you are to use tasks and implement uh, your projects using it, uh, there are some really good practices in here that you can adopt. Well, that was a quick tour of tasks. I hope you uh, enjoy using it as much as we do.